And I am back. Hello, everybody, uh, to the continuation of my quarterly presentation. And I promise you, I'm going to fly slide by slide. I will not talk five minutes for each. <clears throat> I'm going to really best myself. Just watch. Let's start with the bullish arguments. Recession uh, search them spiked recently in a Google uh, search. I have noticed this. Uh, I, I measured this in the United States. When you measure this for the world, uh, the, the results are a little bit different. Um, but since the crypto is so, uh, so, so, so bound to US economy and US S&P 500 must to fall. Uh, and yet the any decoupling of, from that permanent decoupling uh, is only in a, in a theoretical and, and maybe hopium also. Uh, so that's why I think it's it's uh, uh, it's important to watch recessions in the US and watch the US economy. That's what I'm doing, even though this is not my forte. Uh, Sony Mulder is the why is the guy to follow. Curtis is the guy to follow on Twitter. Uh, I re I sometimes react on them or retweet them, so you will find them easily. But uh, I also have to pay attention to this to SMP and and staff. I have to have to pay attention to that because um, uh, because the crypto is just so bound to that. And the recession search them spiked. I'm going to compare it over the five years. It happened twice. First time it happened in the mid-March 2020, which was at the very bottom of the dump. The second time it happened in 2022, but there it happened the, there were two, two spikes. So be very careful. I'm interpreting this to you as bullish argument, but be very careful. This could also be bearish argument. Unfortunately, this is the way it is. We can easily have another spike in this search term, another in, in a month only. Like let's, these were very close to one another. And the first spike happened in like mm, spring 2022. And we were still going down then for a couple of months. And then the second spike happened in in, and in like August 2022, and we had one last leg down. But uh, I'm interpreting this as a bullish argument because when people are searching for a session in their internet search, they are, it's likely that the trouble is already here and behind us and the worst is and the damage is done because people are not going to do it when life is good and when the recession is just about to hit in the coming weeks. They're not going to do that. They're only going to do it out of panic once the mess is here. And we had a emotional emotional correction for the S&P at the start of August together with emotional crash of crypto, uh, but also emotional rebounds for the S&P. For crypto, not as much. But also all the rebounds, strong rebounds. But these rebounds that I'm watching from the SMP seems to be equally emotional. So also be careful. Now, inverted yield curves, this is a bullish argument. And yet again, there is a uh, bearish element to it. <laughs> so the bearish element is right on this picture. I'm I'm um I'm following two yield curves inverted yield curves. One is 10 years minus two years and, and the other one is 10 years minus three months. And the the the, the ladder is very in, inverted still. So that's actually, in my opinion, very safe because I am watching for the uninversion point. The first one, however, look how close it got on 7th of August to uninversion, 0 0.04. So it was almost uninverted. And it can actually get uninverted any month now. It can be September easy peasy uninversion. And <clears throat> uh, right there, that is on the chart I have marked for you with these red lines. I have marked for you um, uh, when the second, when this 10 year minus three months uninverted. And you can see that uh, this second one is more forward looking, that when it uninverts, there is still like some time, like a couple of months even before this is monthly, this is S&P on monthly, a couple of months before we have some kind of a crash. 
Uh, but however, the first one is much more present looking and actually uninverts around some kind of a crash. And that would correspond with the current situation because we had we had about 10% correction for S&P in August. So, but the fact that they are both uninverted still, I believe at the moment, at least it's uninverted. Uh, I believe that's bullish. So this is what makes me the most bullish, guys. And this is also what made me increase my exposure in July before we had this crash. Uh, and I lost because of that. So, and, but this is, it's there. This, this argument is there. And this is super argument. Like we have one of the most beautiful descending wedges of Bitcoin we have ever had in the history of Bitcoin rise uh, ever since inception. I have shown it here on the chart that uh, this is like the first wave, second wave, and now we are the third one. And the third one is even more rare. Uh, like sometimes it's only the two, like or even more often. Or, or, or well, okay. So often, let's say often. Uh, it's uh, it's two waves only, but this is the third wave. And there I have shown you two possible uh, lines. First line would be that if we recover immediately from here, and if we go straight to the new all-time high, the next the next time we go up for Bitcoin. It's going to be the new all-time high, and I'm gonna prove it with another uh, another argument. Or uh, the more uh, the more um, healthy the more healthy way how this could happen would be that it still has to go uh, um, it still has to go down because it went down too steep. So now after a little rebound, it should still come back again to the bottom of this channel and only then break up. Also, I have been trying to draw this descending wedge for Ethereum, but that's much more ugly, much harder to draw. And that's also why I'm telling you that uh, uh, like to me, nothing seems to be as bullish as Bitcoin at the moment in crypto, nothing, nothing. And so I have excellent experience trending wedges. Uh, yes. Uh, also in my 2022 in the long uh, podcast that I was doing with Curtis that's where I started with the wedges and I have hit uh, sometimes, sometimes I have hit good calls based on it. Uh, BTC wedge looks picture perfect and will break up in coming months. So watch out for this call. Watch out. Ethereum wedge is much more asymmetric. There are wedges like this everywhere in all indexes as well. But but not as beautiful as on Bitcoin. But it is true that the uh, that the indexes they have uh, more beautiful wedges than Ethereum does. But the indexes they don't follow it as much. I figure the indexes. That's why I'm not also showing you hit them because the indexes they they break they ignore that more. And this is examples of the Bitcoin wedges in the past. These are two examples. This first one is from August, December, 2022. That was the bear year, okay? We had also very nice uh, descending wedge and it broke in 2023, it broke rapidly. Then the second example, that's the longest example I found and that's also the most similar, the most similar example to the, the, to the current example. And that's the um, uh, July and December, uh, 2019 2019 seems to be really uh in 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 quite few ways similar to current year and uh there we had like just look at this this <laughs> look at this wedge here look at this bitcoin price like doesn't it really remind you today's bitcoin price because sure as hell like this is like like copy pasted <laughs> but it's reality and then we also had uh, three waves and then we broke. We broke the wedge in uh, in January, February 2020, 2020. And then we broke down. And this breakdown was, I'm marking it here, a black swan. So this was a special case breakdown. But uh, interesting just to put it into the comparison. But the, the wedges are bullish. Also Bitcoin market cap versus coin intra open interest ratio. This is one of my also one of the indicators that I like to watch. And I have shown you 
this is a big improvement versus the pra the previous presentation because in previous presentation i was i showed you like like i don't have the 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 decline i don't have this steep decline in open interest slash market cap i don't have this 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 steep decline and now i have it at the start of august it happened so now i have that i have a good decline so and these declines, these good declines, these good, good sharp declines, they tend to 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 mark uh, a local bottom or bottom overall. Current funding fees, uh, I know these things change uh, every eight hours, but I have also shown you in the pre previous presentation and tune it, tune it back up and you will see that the previous presentation, there was a sea of green 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 and now we have we have a uh we have a 50 percent we have a we have a, a a blue we have a green green red and even that that is green it's also sometimes bearish because if you have below 0 0.01 if you have 0 0.0045 that's also where people are shorting or the bots are shorting so markets are heavily shorting or rather bots but the bots are shortening rebounds, which is also not the way I, I like it at all. Because, because of this, how heavy the bots are shortening the rebounds and longing the, 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 the possible rebounds when it goes down. That's why also we are such pumpy dumpy. That's why we have, when we go up, we go up way farther than we should. When we go down, we go down way farther than we should. And again, rinse and repeat. And now it could be the very same move that we go again in this August. We go way way uh, higher than we should. It could be, and uh, and then again after a month or so, we're gonna go uh, way way lower than we should. But the funding fees are bullish. Like the, the short thing, like that is bullish. Google trends are generally bullish. We have Ethereum 9% comparing to 2021, Bitcoin 18% comparing to 2021, and the meme coins are not still as good as they should be. They are 25% versus this uh, March, versus this spring, and they, I think, need to still uh, reset more. But with meme coins, as unpredictable as they are, with meme coins, you, you better always hedge and at least to have some meme coins that still some smaller positions uh, as a hedge that also would I made sure that I'm keeping as well. Bitcoin sh uh, short squeeze almost a certainty and this is with confluence of the wedge. Uh, this together is, is I, I can't, I'm just, I, I'm, I repeat, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'm just repeating myself that this is just Bitcoin bullish and, and full stop. Like, look at this yellow color. Look at that. Like, this is a uh, historic. It's, it's, it's becoming kind of historic. And this is going to be short squeeze. We are going to be witnessing sh uh, soon in the coming months, if not weeks, who knows? In today's market, who knows? It could be weeks only that we're going to see a short squeeze of a big proportions. It's going to be a short squeeze comparable to January 2023 or August 2021. We had short squeezes there. It, this is very bullish. And the first time in my presentations, uh, this is the first time when I'm featuring crypto sentiment as bullish argument. I have always featured it as bearish argument. The first index uh, that's the uh, more uh, more accurate index, uh, let's call it that way. Um, also, just have a look how that index can quickly change. Like now, it's in a, in a fear, almost extreme fear, and I guarantee you that Bitcoin can go to sixty four k tomorrow, and this index is gonna be back to greed sixty. <laughs> Like I'm telling you, like this index is like if you want to be trading based on this index, it's um you are gonna have to trade a lot. That's what I'm saying, because maybe you would have to buy today and sell at 64k tomorrow. 
But uh, also what I like about this index is that finally it seems to be making a cluster in a fear and even in extreme fear. The cluster is for two weeks at the moment, but look at the last time, the, the cluster in the last uh, autumn, look at the cluster here. That cluster was two months. So two weeks, like I'm not satisfied yet with the time. I'm not satisfied with that. And most of all, with the confluence, the second index. This is the second index that I like much more. And I think it's really more realistic, much more realistic than the first, much more telling. Because this, this, this index is saying that we are still not as bearish as we were in September last year. We are not as bearish yet. And the first index is showing the opposite that we are more bearish than September last year. And look around you, look around you. What do you think is true? Because I'm going to show you in a moment that yes, we are reasonably bearish already, but we are not as bearish as we were in last September. Absolutely no. Like last September, it was really over the top, like the amount of people that I saw in September last year that openly talked about how they are positioned for more downside was very, very high. And that's also what finally, why it finally came to me that, oh my God, I should actually come back to Elena, really. Uh, it's not coming to me yet here. But uh, it's, it's bullish already, guys. It's bullish already and maybe... Uh, also, as I'm watching all this bullish argument again, maybe I am going to increase my exposure after this presentation. After all, I'll make a video about it because uh, I am 50-50 still. I have bought nothing uh, between uh, at 50,000. I bought nothing for me uh, because I don't knife catch. Um, and uh, of course, you know, when the V-shaped recoveries are a danger if you don't knife catch. But uh, I'm I'm completely at peace at not buying the bottoms and selling the tops. I'm completely at peace. As long as I'm protected and at the same time that I make money, if we go up, like I'm fine. So both indexes in fear, um, CNC index superior. And now watch this. This is just my observation. We still have bulls like this Elijah. This is all viral, okay? I make sure always that I bring you viral stuff. I don't bring you no name guys that nobody listens to with 10 views or 100 views. I bring you 160,000 views. I bring you 275,000 views, 140,000 views, 263,000 views. So, and we have still bulls and what I don't like is that the bulls get approval from their followers. Like you really need to see that when this Elijah is going to be again shilling the market, you really need to see his followers to tell him that that you are a clown, like like F off, like come on. Uh, but they are agreeing, like bear trap time, buying and holding. So that's not ideal. But, but I can finally bring you First time in my presentations, I can bring you that we have bears there. We have bears there and they are at it. 40k call. Like this bear, he has it completely wrong. Like, oh my God. <sighs> For instance, like, why is that that every time when people use this chart, they get it wrong? In June, before we started correcting, Everybody was was using this chart and showing that we, we are here. We are we are uh, disbelief. We are disbelief. Look, oh, you know. Then we went down, and now they are all like, we are anxiety. We are going down, you know. Uh, but in truth, we were complacent back in June. That what I've also uh, uh, called correctly on so many times, and today I would uh, I would estimate that we are around the panic. Well, there was a panic at the start of the month for sure. That was a panic, guys. So it was like here, here, not here, but here. Like most of the damage should be done. Crypto sentiment is bullish. Bitcoin Fibonacci, this is my absolute cherry on the cake. 
cherry on the cake. Long story short, you know how FIPS are important. You know the Fibonacci numbers. Like we are surrounded by them and we don't even know. We are not even aware of it, most of us. And that's why it's I am using it more and more often for the investing and I'm starting to see through it. And I saw I saw CryptoCon having this idea to use the, the Fibonacci extension on timing, not on price, but on timing and to use it from halving to halving, halving to halving, halving to halving. And the results are shocking. The first, uh, the time frame from 2013 to 16, that is the least impressive because we only had like two swing points at the extension. But the second and the third time frame, so the last cycle and the two cycles ago, both of these are tremendously impressive. Watch. The f uh, some kind of a, a interesting local top exactly on the extension here in July 2017. 2017. The, sec the cycle top only like a week away from the second extension. Very cycle top almost to the day hit. Almost to the day. Can't stress it enough for you that this is no coincidence really if you think this is all just coincidence or bullshit just watch something else then another extension had also a reasonable swing point another extension almost nailed the bottom another extension almost nailed 2019 top only a few weeks away and that's about it. And the last cycle, like copy paste, the first extension, a significant cycle, a significant local top in in April 2021, and it was hit to the last week. It was hit to precision of a week. And the second extension hitting the cycle top only like one week off. stunning results so important is where are the next extensions are going to be we can only use predicted halving okay uh obviously so there, there is going to be uh there is going to be some um, uh, deviation but uh don't worry that much about it because um you need like you need to write down these months the where these Fibonacci's are, sh are are showing here, you need to write down these months. And once we get to these months, you need to remember that this is the month. You need to remember what I told you in this presentation. Tune back my presentation. Watch this part again, and to remind yourself that March, April, twenty twenty five, uh, is is the time where likely some strong swing point for a Bitcoin will, will occur. And the same for October, November 2025, somewhere there. These will, to be, these, these two will be very strong swing points, likely. Uh, and the last two cycles, they were both tops. Okay, but let's be contrarians and let's, let's say that, okay, so the last two cycles, there were tops. So now everybody's going to be watching for that to be the top again. And everybody is kind of watching for 2025 to be the cycle top. So let's be a contrarian and let's say that maybe it's going to be important bottoms. Okay. Maybe it's going to be important bottoms for Bitcoin in the spring 2025 and October, November 2025. And that concludes my bullish arguments. Let's go to the bearish. Uh, there are fewer bearish than bullish. My first bearish argument is the bull market support band. I know this seems like a mess to you. I'm going to make it simpler for you. Just watch this uh, yellow line and pinky line because the space between the yellow and pinky in my uh, chart, that's bull market support band, okay? And we have broken that bull market support band in August 
and now we have on four this is four hourly we are retesting it back and as you can see rejecting from it on multiple times and as i'm recording this video our ego we retested it back again and 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 i know when we are retesting something it looks like it's going to break out like immediately but crypto works the opposite <laughs> when you retest something like quite often and don't break it soon then the opposite will happen but uh, what should be happening is that after we lost the bull market support band we should stay below the band for at least one two months uh, but um, uh, the July I don't have it here actually I do have it here as you can see we've lost it first time in July okay the band okay and then we denied all these rules we denied them like like this never existed like this worked the past years and years and years and years and years i have to go back cycles a couple of cycles ago to find a case where we lost bull market support band after holding it for so many months where we lost the band and we can bake we immediately regain it i have to go years to the past to find that case so but uh, in spite of that manipulation i guess is very very strong and we just regained the band again and then we lost it again so maybe this is now weak argument okay uh, and maybe just as you can see how quickly they can manipulate it one way or another uh, uh, you can um, uh, maybe we can say that actually we are going to break it up again very soon you know and, and go to no time highs so but uh, i'm showing you some cases this is q3 2022 where we lost the band retested it stayed below stayed below retested it again stay below and only after one to three months we broke it up and continued this is q3 2019 we lost the band retested it and came back down again and stayed there for one to like one to three months from losing and only then we broke and and came back above it in q2 2021 we again lost it stayed below one to two three like it's just uh, it's repeating and again and again and again and it, only in this july we regained it and lost it again but if we hadn't regained it like if you just if you close your eyes and or keep them open but if you like in your mind if you if you make this disappear and if you if you think that we, we should have stayed below since july we actually should have stayed below the band since july then you can say that we are almost then maybe two months below the band so if that's true then the next month is going to be where we start going back above it but losing the band generally is bearish that's why i have it here this is a very good argument this is something to think about this is bitcoin market cycle r or uh, roi so um uh this is a um uh um ROI from last market cycle peak and there are the three the, the, the two previous cycles with the different colors okay and we have the current cycle with the green color okay and uh, this is not up, uh, up to date this was taken the sample like a month ago so today we are lower and actually we are a little bit lower we are a little bit lower but this shows you very very clearly that this cycle we have been overheated comparing to the last cycles that uh, the roi has been just just greater recently and that actually really we needed to cool down and stay sideways or or go even down consolidate for longer so this is this is bearish because this shows you uh, a general overheating comparing to the previous cycles and and shows you that like there's a nice intersection here, you know, where all the all cycle both cycles intersected, <clears throat> and it would be a very very uh, a cool if it would uh, intersect again there. <laughs> like uh, yeah, we came here, and we are somewhere here right now, or here, so we would have to go actually to forty thousand to intersect. Okay, this is a bearish argument, and this one I don't like when I see it. So remember when I told you that most of the today, most of the shorting is by the bots and they are shorting rebounders 
and it, that's why we always then rebounds way higher than we should, and then we come back down way higher than we should. So this is also like from this um, from this indicator that I'm showing you because the last time, like what I really love to see, what is a very good sign of the bottom is panic shorting. When we are crashing down, panic shorts. And we seen that a year ago, not that far. August 2023 was panic shorting. And I really thought, I really thought I'm going to see it again this August when we were going to 50,000. I really, I really thought I was watching. And I was thinking to myself that, you know, like give me this panic shorting and, you know, maybe I will knife catch. But I didn't see that and we didn't have it. The only shorting that we have is bots shorting these rebounds here. We did not have panic shorting. So my evaluation is that the August panic to 50,000 was not enough. September is coming. So uh, like historic data are arguably very important. Like what else are you going to bet based on if not historic data and historically just look at this chart that i'm showing you i'm showing you bitcoin quarterly bitcoin monthly ethereum quarterly and also s p 500 monthly and every single time september is by far the worst month so that is my bearish argument for against increasing exposure just before september hit but uh, also because sentiment has gotten bearish, people are calling for lower prices. Like, are we going to have really a new all-time high fake pump and then reject at the end of September maybe to make September bearish like I'm showing you? Are we going to do that? Because we absolutely could. Like, after what I've seen on the market recently, nothing surprises me anymore. Like, all emotions just died. And this is the September is the worst month by far. And the second worst month is um, June. And again, we had a bad June this year. Again, we had bad June. So, yeah, um, actually, um, yeah, good September was the last. Green September was for the Bitcoin last year. But it was not by much. It was few percent. And if you miss on 3% pump, it's completely okay. Like, come on. Like, and maybe the only worthwhile good September was 2016. I wasn't in crypto back then. But even that was 6%. And back then, Bitcoin was um, much more volatile. So 6% was arguably still bearish. And But most of the times, like, look at this red. Look at this sea of red. Like September just ends with in in a negative return, so uh, it's uh, uh, that's why I'm also sharing that the best seasonal entries are historically sometime around the end of September or start of October, and I think this could repeat this time again. Also June repeated again, exactly like it should. September can repeat again, but uh, I am making constantly people are aware of the possibility of, the, of a fake pump. <clears throat> so bearish. Um, yeah, I'm almost done with my presentation, guys. So uh, this is uh, when I think about this, this always scares me the most. Um, I'm showing you my uh, my slides from the previous presentations about meme clowns. Uh, I was the only guy at the start of June who identified this, who noticed that everybody, every influencer turned into a meme clown, all of us, all of a sudden, all at the same time. And and all my crypto friends came to me and disagreed with me selling. And, and this helped me the most because, of course, when, when selling is right, it never feels right. So when you have even your crypto friends coming and telling you that is not right, so it makes it even harder, but that's just the way that's 
how this game is. This is not complaining. Like we all like the I like this game. I like crypto. So I'm not complaining. Um and like when I look at this this uh this this um these slides even today most of the meme clowns they are gone by the way they are not no longer uh meme clowning most of them gave up okay um but generally meme season we had tremendous meme season the biggest meme season in history of cryptocurrency we had this spring may and in Solana, even June, July, the biggest in the history of cryptocurrency. And after something like that, logically actually should come even end of the cycle. And that's a bearish argument here. And also the celebrities coming that we had in, in May also tends to happen at the end of the cycle. So hence hence my also my uh my very bearish call that I mentioned at the start of the yeah of the first part of this presentation 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 trillion coin market cap like 40k bitcoin 35k bitcoin etc that's that's where it comes from it comes from being a, a very scared of the meme season that we had. Uh, meme coins and meme coins today, this is also bearish, although it's it's half half maybe, because uh, the meme coins, uh, the meme coins uh, destruction or uh, uh, correction happened, uh, is, is happening, is happening. This is Pepe, as you can see, reasonably down. And this is Solana meme coins. This is the popular Solana meme coins. And there is much, many more where the cha chart looks exactly like this, like new all-time high in June and new all-time high in July. And the same for this retardio, new all-time high in actually no, it only made new all-time high in July. Okay, okay, never mind. New all-time highs in July. Okay, new all-time highs in July for so many Solana meme coins. But there is, of course, there is always one that is having new all-time highs still. There is always one that the, the season for which it, it, it ends way, way later and it lasts longer. So this giga chat here, uh, it still continues. But uh, I'm including this as a bearish argument. The reason because I don't believe the meme sentiments is fully reset. I believe it's only reset to 50% maybe. And we are going to need longer, at least if not further crash of the meme coins, maybe just a sideways, bleedy sideways, where they are going to be forgotten, overlooked, boring, dead. And I think not enough so far. Conclusion from my presentation, from my quarterly presentation, Q3 2024. Crypto sentiment has been reset reasonably. And I believe that the majority crypto is now justified. But except for the meme coins. Bitcoin is flagging green on multiple levels, where are altcoins signal continuation of underperformance, at least versus Bitcoin. There is a confluence of indicators pointing on end of summer 2024 to be likely good entry into S&P 500 as well as crypto. End of the summer meaning uh, around September. Could be the end of August, could be the start of October, could be somewhere, somewhere there. But I, and I can't stress this enough, uh, the market and crypto has uh, proven very um, strongly that it is very capable of any fake moves. So be aware of a potential fake, uh, fake pump and another dump eventually after that. Uh, um, but of course, I would be the happiest. And if the for once, if the crypto stays low for about a few more weeks and, uh, and give me the confirmation that I need. Uh, but overall, I am looking 
at the end of the summer as my possible re-entry. Thank you for watching.